Hi, I'm Geraldine Carl with The Real News Network. This healthcare story is part of a series we are doing to help Americans make better informed decisions about healthcare reform. But we can only do this work with your financial support. The economic crisis has hit us hard. Please become a member today so that we can continue bringing you stories like this. The Obama administration is facing forceful opposition to their public component of health care reform. The Republican Congress and an increasing number of industry representatives are speaking out against a government-run option that would compete with private insurance. The AMA strongly opposes a public health insurance plan operated by the federal government with a pay schedule that's based on Medicare. We have serious concerns about the creation of a government-run public health insurance plan and the, uh, the corrosive consequences it would have on the private health insurance market. On Monday, President Obama spoke at the American Medical Association. The AMA, a powerful lobbying group, represents approximately 15% of all practicing physicians. I believe one of these options needs to be a public option that will give people a broader range of choices and inject competition into the healthcare market. Let me also uh, address a illegitimate concern that's being put forward by those who are claiming that a public option is somehow a Trojan horse for a single-payer system. Now, I'll be honest, there are countries where a single-payer system works pretty well. But I believe that it's important for our reform efforts to build on our traditions here in the United States. A total of 13 single-payer proponents have been arrested during the Baucus Finance Committee hearings for demanding to include an advocate of the plan in the discussion. One of them, Dr. Margaret Flowers, has been finally invited to testify before Senator Kennedy's Health Committee. For decades, reliance on the market and efforts to patch together a system using a public and private mix has failed to guarantee quality health care to all Americans. The market is the wrong model. Health care is not a commodity. It is a human right. Earlier, Senator Sanders said the Finance Committee would not be open to a single pair plan. Is Senator Baucus open to your ideas? In, 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 he's not. To a single payer idea? No, not in a million years. With the mounting pressure and tight deadlines, the Congress is put in a difficult position. The costs of, uh, of, of investing in these things and getting this right and bending that curve are not cheap. But my fear is that we'll end up so bogged down in all of this that we end up doing nothing once again. Uh, and I wanted to raise if there's anyone here who thinks that doing nothing is a better alternative than trying to come up with something here that would allow us to bend that curve. The Real News spoke to Dr. Flowers shortly after the hearing. It's better to pass nothing than to pass the wrong thing. And I wish that single-payer advocates could jump behind the public option and that we couldn't believe that it would turn into a single-payer system, which is what they say. But the evidence doesn't point to that. The evidence points to the opposite in that what we've seen with Medicare is that the private insurance will continue to cherry-pick and take the healthiest patients, continue to restrict and deny care, and the public um, insurance will bear the most of the burden of, of paying for the people who need health care and not just that but it doesn't solve the fundamental problems that we have in this country with dealing with so many different insurers it just adds one more insurance to the mix it's going to be too expensive the connector that's exchange that they want to create will add cost their efforts to regulate private insurance is going to add cost um, health care providers are still going to have to deal with a whole maze of different plans and patients are still going to have to deal with that and the whole billing adds a lot of cost. So if it was a solution that we could believe in, sure we would jump behind it, but there's no evidence to show that that you know, will be the case. This idea that they thought that they could actually craft a bipartisan bill that was going to meet the president's goals was very much of a long shot. And if you watch the hearing today, you hear that the moneyed interests are very entrenched. The insurance companies are very set on individual mandates. The um, employers, the business side, really doesn't like employer mandates. Um, they, they're just very narrowly focused on their own interests instead of being focused on creating a health system that um, 
creates health for our country. So um, I think that whole idea of being bipartisan from the beginning was a, was a mistake. I mean, we have the opportunity right now. We have a Democratic president, a Democratic Congress. Um, we should be able to craft legislation that serves our people. The study that was done by FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, showed that there has been a blackout of single payer. So a lot of people around the country still aren't aware of what it is. The more that people understand what it is that we're talking about, that we're talking about creating a health system like there are in all of the other industrialized nations so that every person in this country can get the health care that they need, um, I think more and more people will, will support it, will come to understand it. And the benefits are just huge. I mean, we have enough money right now in this country to provide care to everybody if we stop wasting it on the health insurance bureaucracy and profit and the pharmaceutical bureaucracy and profit. And, and it helps businesses by taking the burden of paying health insurance premiums off of businesses so that they can hire people and innovate and do the things they need to do. And, and the American public has just been very misinformed for decades about this. And, um, so we're going to do whatever we can to educate them. To promote public awareness, Healthcare Now, PNHP, CNA and other groups held dozens of rallies and talks across the United States. One nation, one plan, can we do it? Yes, we can! Going to a clinic is a nightmare. You become a prisoner inside the clinic. Now, when you have one system, one insurance company, which is one single-payer system, we have more control over these kinds of things. And you should know that you have, you have 85,000 organized voices behind you and with you in the, on this issue. I'm very proud to say also that we are on the verge of something historical in our country. We are uniting all the nurses' unions in this country within months we will be 150,000 strong, and our national policy as a new national union will be single-payer health care for all, Medicare for all, everybody in, nobody out. Humanity cannot afford to continue private uh, coverage for people. This is the civil rights movement of our generation, and for-profit industry has no place in a just health care system. We're coming up against one of the strongest industries in our country, which is the health industry. They have, you know, so many billions of dollars. So the only way that we're going to counteract or, or have our voice heard or be able to make any progress is to treat this like a civil rights movement. So we need more street action. We need more people coming out and rallying for single payer, more people putting pressure on their lawmakers, and possibly more doctors being arrested. Hi again, I'm Geraldine Carl with The Real News Network. Over the next few months, we plan to investigate, report and debate the different proposals for American health care reform. We will continue our series, Americans Talk to Canadians About Health Care, and we will broaden that to include reports on the experience with healthcare models in Europe and in other countries. We will be holding town hall debates where people can discuss what kind of reforms will create the best health care system for Americans. We'll do all of this without corporate or government funding. This kind of independent programming is only possible if you become a member of the Real News Network with a tax-deductible donation today. The economic crisis has made things difficult for us, as it has for many others. We need your support today if we are going to produce the kind of uncompromising journalism that people need. Please click on the Donate button and become a member now. If you are a member, please contribute again. Let us know you want us to continue this work.